So I hope this is helping. I mean, uh, helping uh, uh, answer that question. So that disciple or that new believer will be disciple, and then eventually the process. It will take. It will not be overnight. It will take some time, but eventually there will be a church. And if they are not trained, then we have a lot of resources available. So now that's what our, you know, missions directors here in the Philippines, if they have planted churches overseas, what the, the mission directors do is they would go and mentor them, you know, and then they do face-to-face. Uh, -face. But prior to that, they're actually doing Skype or they have other materials there. But the face-to-face -face sometimes is also necessary. But again, uh, because of technology, uh, pastoral training now is becoming easier. Uh, you can do it alone, you can do it in a group, or you can do it... Yeah. Okay, any other question? Sure. Yes. Uh, what is the effective way of, of introducing the specific name of our event? In terms of different various religions. Because there, uh, I, I encountered a Muslim student, then I introduced to him our God. And what, what would be the effective process? Of well, well, the effective process really is to start from creation. Because again, if they, if they have a different concept of God, you will be in trouble. Because you're talking of something different. But if you go, that's a good thing with Company 3. You always go from the start. That before anything else, someone existed. And this someone is God. And this God is the one who created everything. The world, the universe. And then chapter 2, it, it, uh, it, this is the same God who created us. You should have the same footing or, or basis. Because uh, unless you really start from there, then it would be difficult. Like I was saying, the Hindus also, of course, uh, they have three, millions of gods. And adding one god is not a problem to them because they're used to that. But adding a god who created everything, oh, oh this is something. In fact, uh, maybe those others will be the addition. This is the main god, the main thing. So again, it, it, would, it would really be very crucial to, to have a starting point. Which god are you talking about? Otherwise, that would really be a problem. So, again, uh, when you talk about major religions, uh, the, the bottom line is go back to, to really to who God is. That's why Company 3 is working. I mean, not just, I mean, it, it comes in different forms. No? Company 3 or others are a bigger group, but it's basically the same passage. And it's basically the same process. Because you want to change those wrong, wrong ideas about God. No? And that's why it's working among Muslims, among Hindus, among Buddhists. Because it's helping them understand that there is a real God. No? That's why when, when uh, you know, in, in, uh, in areas where, in the Middle East, where miracles are taking place, the Muslims are saying, hey, we prayed in the name of Muhammad, but nothing happened. Why in the name of Jesus, you know, we see miracles taking place. We see healing taking place. So different concepts of God. So again, bottom line is really go back to who the, 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 this creator God that we, we want them to, to know and, 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 and introduce. Uh, otherwise, you don't have a starting point. Always have a starting point to talk about. Okay? Uh, now, in relation to what we had been discussing yesterday, also, any question? Yes. Um, okay, the uh, first question uh, has to do with the, the challenge in Nigeria or Boko Haram, uh, reaching out to such, such a group because the the northern part of Nigeria is the Muslim, Muslim. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's, it's becoming a terrible place for people to live because of the attacks and other <coughs> attacks. So what are the opportunities of one to 
explore such kind of uh, dangerous terrain with pollution? Yeah, um, I, I, I was in Nigeria once, in Lagos and Ibadan, and we were discussing with our partners there, and they were actually sharing that the north is a difficult area to reach out because it's predominantly Muslim. And uh, so there, it's not the usual thing that you go and then preach the gospel. But it's something you need to look for creative platforms or ways to be able to go there. For example, there are calamities. No? So what can, can be done? You go and provide help. No, if they need food, they need medicines, they need doctors, they need... So these are some ways to be able to, to enter uh, the air. For example, there's that problem in, in Marawi, right? Uh, the, now in, the, in Southern Philippines. Uh, this is uh, an, the, they call the Islamic city of Marawi, and many ISIS troops have actually penetrated and, uh, I mean, and infiltrated the area. So government has to, to really fight them, the, the Philippine army. So many Muslims were displaced. And so in evacuation areas or in places where they were, uh, you know, uh, like housed in uh, Christian organizations came to provide medical help, to provide food, to, uh, you know, uh, whatever aspect, help them in hygiene, sanitation, now they are providing like uh, in the education, temporary classroom shelters, things like that. So because of that, they are so welcome. No, and in fact, uh, many are asking, "Why are you doing this?" And they said, "We are Christians, and we love Muslims." Mm -hmm. In fact, it was Isa Al Masih, Jesus Christ, who told us to come to help you, and they believe in Jesus as a prophet, right? So they said, oh, if, if Prophet Jesus told you to come, then you're very welcome. And then eventually they will, they will, uh, they will really wonder, no? So some will ask uh, about, you know, what, what do you really believe as Christians and things like that. No? And so that's where they began sharing. And we have seen uh, a lot, you know, we have, we have teams that are there actually doing holistic ministry, but actually... Uh, those are platforms so that they can share the love of Jesus. And we are seeing many of them coming to Christ as a result. So uh, it's not the usual missionary work that you just go and preach. But uh, there are situations or calamities or uh, situations where we can come in using different platforms. Uh, there are normally, uh, there, these areas are also poor and depressed. So some platforms, ministry platforms, they go there to do community development. So they, they go there to help develop the community, but it's a, it's a platform actually to be able to connect with people. And then others, livelihood, livelihood, meaning uh, they help them uh, in their skills. For example, in Southern Philippines, some of the Muslim communities are fishermen. So teams would go there to reach out to them. What they do is they come in and teach modern fishing techniques. So they're very welcome. And they provide livelihood to the people because those who do not know how, then they are able to learn. So they're very much welcome. You know, uh, I know of uh, teams that are uh, in, in depressed areas because the people do not know how to farm and, and, and cultivate. So they taught them modern way of doing, doing farming. And so it's providing uh, them income. Uh, you know this Moringa? Moringa? So there's one community, they were taught how to plant uh, this uh, malunggay. Or yeah, of course, Moringa is the, the more popular term. But in Philippines, we call it malunggay. So plant many, and then uh, this group uh, who actually ministered to them, uh, actually co coordinated with the Philippine government so that they were provided a machine to make the Moringa capsules. Mm -hmm. So they were taught the technology. They were, they were helped actually how to produce the, and plant. And so now they, are, they have livelihood in their community. You know? So that's why they are, the, the, the group that are ministering to them, they're so welcome. They're so loved by the people because now they have money they, they are able to send their children to school. 
but it's a community development platform. You know, so it, it, livelihood platform. It, it's it, it depends. The, I know there's a Muslim community. They they don't know how to penetrate, but they discovered that they buy bread. We call that pandisal, the the Filipino bread pandisal, from another village. They have to walk for uh, quite a distance. And so this team, they thought, oh, we can go inside the, this community. We make pandisal. So they, they started a small bakery. They just produce hot pandisal. So different times of the day, they have hot pandisal. So the community was very happy. You're welcome. Because we, need, we don't need to walk far to buy what we need. Their needs were provided through that business. Many ways. That's, they, they call that business as missions, using business as a missions platform. So many ways, actually. So I hope this helps. No, so we have to pray for op open doors, opportunities, and it's God who is doing that. All of these calamities, uh, like summer and late, who is from late here? Otakloban, yeah. Yeah, that, that place is one of the most difficult places to reach out in the Philippines. It's, it's actually not Muslim, but it's Catholic, diehard Catholics. But after Haiyan, one of the most devastating typhoon that hit the, the, this planet, what happened? Wow, so many churches have been planted because many, many Christian organizations came to, to help. And so the people were saying, hey, why are you doing this? And so it's because of God's love overflowing in us. So we, we would love to just help. You know? The, the, we had opportunity to be part of uh, helping during, there was the typhoon that hit actually, uh, what, you know, Southeast Asia, Thailand, Banda Aceh, remember that? Uh, no, no, that's the, the big typhoon that hit, uh, the, the tsunami, yeah, the, the tsunami that hit Myanmar, Th Thailand, and even up to Banda Aceh, you know, that, that part of, Indonesia and what happened as a result no so we have teams actually I, I, I spent some time there also in in Thailand and I met an Indian guy very wealthy guy he owns a, a, a shop no they, they make a clothes uh, and he was very wealthy but after the tsunami his friends oh, for, forgot him because he, he lost everything no more money even relatives from India, he said, before they always call and ask for money. Now, they never called. <laughs> and so I had a chat with him, and I asked him, hey, how, how come that you, you gave your life to Jesus? He said, Pastor, you know, when all of my friends left me, it was the Christians who came. They cleaned my house. They provided me food. They, you know, provided clothing. They helped me begin start my business again and he said I was so touched and uh, I said if this is uh, the religion uh, that, that is doing this this is what I want and if this is the God who says we help we love this is the God that I want and he was crying when he was sharing that with me no? so a lot of a lot of open doors can happen as a result no? so sometimes it's God who, who brings calamities so that there would be, op you know, opportunities for the gospel to be shared. Refugees, wars in different uh, areas in the Middle East, no? Uh, and so you have rep refugees that, that are uh, going to other places where they are uh, shared with the gospel. So refugees are ministry, rep uh, uh, ministry among the refugees in, in Thailand area from Burma, from Myanmar, yeah. Uh, we have a lot of refugee ministries in, in, in Malaysia area actually coming from some Muslim and African countries. You know, so it depends. Before, uh, a lot of Vietnamese came here also in the Philippines. No? And, and uh, many also Vietnamese were reached out uh, when they were here. So, you know, God works in different ways. But traditional approach, it's difficult. But God opened doors. And sometimes we just have to be creative. We just have to pray and be sensitive. How can we enter this community? No? Uh, I, I know of a pastor. He entered the community. All there are, the people are not working. They just, 
uh, sit down in the streets, you know, drink, and then, uh, and then uh, tell stories the, all the time. So he went. He said, how can I start uh, ministry here? So he thought they have a lot of farmlands, but it's not utilized. So he taught them how to plant. Uh, root crops, uh, sweet potatoes, and things like that. And soon, no more people were. Uh, do, I mean, all of, all of the people are now earning. They are helping in the farm. And so they told the pastor, Pastor, we want you to be our next barangay captain, the leader in the community. They said we decided nobody will run against you because we we want you to be our community leader. So he was not just a, a church leader. But he became the community leader. So all of them asked him. So he served as the barangay captain. And now, you know, m more connection with, with the community. So many people came to Christ as a result. So it's the holistic ministry. That's why now it's team airport. It's not just one church planter or one, ministry, one person in the team doing it. But normally it's like several people with different expertise. No. So I hope that answers the question. So we'll pray for breakthroughs in, in the northern part of Nigeria. And uh, let's just pray for creativity also in uh, how to do that. For example, Afghanistan, you know, after the, the problem that took place there, a lot of ministries were started. And it was all because of community development and uh, programs, actually. So breakthroughs uh, will, will take place in God's time and God's way. Uh, but the important thing is that there are creative ways. So we can be creative, we can ask God to give us ideas how to penetrate. Like the pandesal is a very creative thing. I mean, how can you go there? And, oh, they, they don't have pandesal, so we go there. Okay. Other questions related to yesterday's uh, discussion? So I hope that's helping. So at least, uh, you know, all questions in your minds uh, will be addressed. Uh, it's a very important. But, uh, in, in the church's content all over the world, have you ever encountered about uh, theological issues that create a division in the church? Oh, there are really a lot of theological issues. Mm -hmm. How do you address that one? How can we address that one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the theological issues because there are a lot of, you know, uh, yeah. Again, the problem, the very, very problem there is that people are so engrossed with, with knowledge and not application. And the good thing that we really see why, why uh, company tree or disciple making movement is effective is because of the application. It's being applied and lives are transformed. That's why it's so convincing. You know, so... Uh, again, uh, the way to really address that is to go back to, to the scriptures and really and ju <laughs> just uh, allow God to transform us. Uh, because the very, the very uh, reason why uh, there are, you know, uh, teachings like that or divisions is because they want to be the boss, they want to be the leader, they want to be recognized as, you know. But servant leadership, Christ modeled that for us. <laughs> And if we really look at scriptures and we really apply it, then as leaders, it's it's I uh, know uh, it should be following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. That as leader we should be serving. Well, in in the corporate world, in the, the in the world, if you are the leader, then people should serve you. But in 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 Christ's model of leadership, it's servant leadership. So if you can address that issue, I believe you will be able to prevent uh, these things. And, and of course, uh, the, the issue of giftedness also, giftings, spiritual gifts. So that's, that's why that's one of the things that new believers had to be taught. Because you will always excel in your areas of giftedness. You know, if you're gifted in doing it as a leader, you will always excel in that. But not all of us are called to be leaders. You know, we, we, we have to operate based on God's design. No, so if, if that would also be addressed already in the church, so there is no competition. Yeah. So you will be able to acknowledge everybody if they excel in the in, in what in other areas. And you will not feel sorry, oh I I I, I how I wish I can really uh, be a good leader, how how I wish I can be a good singer. 
No? So I think that that's the very the very essence. It's really applying God's truth, you know. Uh, and and if you apply God's truth, there will be many problems that can be prevented. Again, the very issue here is because they would rather see themselves known rather than Christ. Uh, remember, in scriptures we're reminded uh, uh, that you know Christ should increase, and we keep on decreasing, and Christ should just be seen in, in our lives. So, yeah, it's basically uh, wrong application of truth, no, and and especially the the, the ego that you want to, to be to be recognized. Open times that's the, the main reason why false teaching comes in. I, I hope that helps. Because really if if we if everybody will just you know after reading the scriptures, what do I owe to do? Well we will have a wonderful church. We'll have a wonderful world actually. But the problem is, it's all, all, always here. Just in the mind, we know, we know it, but we don't put it into practice. Like they said, the Philippines is the only Christian nation in the Far East, but the most corrupt. Because many Filipinos are saying, I'm a Christian, but they don't really obey the teachings of Christ. I mean, a bold star will say, I'm, I'm a Christian. <laughs> How can that be? Yeah. So, not consistent to the teachings of Christ. Other questions? Yes. Any member of that can add or you can really evangelize the, the church believer already, you know, they just like doing the obligation during Sunday worship. Uh, in the church, uh, you, you want to make sure that your members are, are sure of going to heaven, are, are Christians? Yes. <laughs> Now, it's like, uh, the church member, they just, Sunday they come there as obligation, their obligation. Mm -hmm. And then that's it, finish. Which day they come back to their dinner. So, any man to address them and then bring them, and realize them that uh, might come? Well, uh, you know, I, I, I try to study some of the past growing churches. The, the pastor normally will give a message, but always relate the message to salvation. Say so talk about uh, a husband and wife relationship, no, and then very good. So Christians, we everybody is re really very much encouraged. But he will say, well, but the bottom line here is, you know, it's because of Christ, you know, that is the center of the relationship. And so if anybody of you here who have not yet received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, this may be the good time. You know, a good opportunity for you to say, Lord, I recognize that I have sinned against you. Please forgive me for my sins. I now receive you into my heart, into my life as my personal Savior and Lord. If that is the desire of your heart, then you can say this prayer with me. And then they say the sinner's prayer. So sometimes uh, that would be effective. But there are also times that uh, I know of some pastors. Uh, in fact, I also did that before. Uh, we are now preparing our church to reach out. But I mean, how can we tell people we are sure of going to heaven if we are not really sure? Or how can we tell people about the way of salvation and if we don't really, we don't really know the way? So first, uh, let's. Uh, so you can briefly just talk about you know the gospel, and this is what we would like to to share with others. And uh, well, it's not religion that saves; it's a personal relationship with the Lord. Not you being a member here doesn't guarantee you will go to heaven. But it's your personal relationship with, with the Lord. So what do we do? It's very simple. Recognize that we have sinned against God, you know, acknowledge we cannot save ourselves. We and there is the you know Christ's death on the cross to pay for our sins. So you can do that. And then if you have not prayed that prayer, you have not done this yet, this may be the best time to do it. And that will prepare you to be witnesses to the lost and dying world. So, I mean, ma many ways can be done. Uh, yeah, or if you're, you're teaching a new tool, uh, evangelism tool, well, uh, you may say you may be attending the church already, 
But maybe there are some doubts in your heart. Am I really sure that I'm going to be with God in heaven? You know? uh, so as, as you go through this, then try to examine yourself. And if you're not really sure, then it's not, it's not bad. It's not a sin to, to say, God, I recognize only now that I've been attending the church and I have really no personal relationship with you yet. So, and then lead them in the sinner's prayer. So there are various ways. And you can do it without even offending people. Uh, sometimes in, uh, when, when you visit people, no? you can also do the same. So before I pray for you or, you know, what, whatever, then you can just relate, you know, sometimes the gospel. Uh, so the, God will just give you the creativity, the wisdom uh, to, to be able to do that. If that's your desire, and that's your prayer. That's why it's very critical uh, every day, God, uh, I'll, I'm starting today or I'll visit these people, I'll do this. Guide me, help me. You know, help me to bring people one step closer to you. That should be our daily, daily prayer. Lord, whatever, whoever people I'll meet today, help, them, help me to bring them one step closer to you. One step closer to you. One step closer to you. Okay? So I hope that's helping.